story about this Lofta character. And <clears throat> several things jumped out at me about it. It's that uh, anyone else reads, uh, can I get it free on campus? Not always. Why would you pick up something? Because you might get ink on your fingers, and that would be sticky. Um, I understand. It's okay. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm not judging you because, like, it's a total freak that it shows up in my house. It's not, not my plan. It's not my choice. But it's just saying, so I need it. Um, but they started citing his my MySpace page and his and Facebook, and so all these kinds of claims about his. Everyone's trying to figure out, you know, like what his political ideology is based on his. Books, list of favorite books on Facebook. And the kind of statements that he made, and then people are interviewing his friends, or at least something that are his, whatever we call his Facebook friends, are posting things. And then journalists are going to their postings and sort of, you know, culling this. And uh, beyond the fact that, you know, it sort of complicates the sort of grammar that shows up within the New York Times. Um, although, did you see he had a, that he thought the government was using grammar to control us? Anyone see that? No, of course you didn't. Because at best, you're scanning the headlines as they sort of zoom through on your phone. Um, but one of his sort of conspiracies was that the government was using sort of grammar, language grammar, you know, like sort of nouns and adjectives, and sort of using that sort of to brainwash us as children to be sort of, you know, sheep and easily controlled. But anyway, but that would, he would have been happy to see this New York Times article because people were posting on their Facebook pages using very poor, atrocious grammar. You know, I guess they were desperate to be free. Uh, and then it was pulled from it. But the, the interesting thing was that this person was immediately visible. I mean, as soon as he does something, right, like all, there's all these kinds of places that we can go, look, we don't, no longer have to interview his mother, who's probably gone into hiding, uh, or whatever. We no longer have to sort of, you know, subpoena records of whatever, you know, any of this stuff. It's all there for us to find. Um, and the interesting thing about it, perhaps for us as either whatever future police officers or future sociologists, um, Uh, is uh, they have all this data that more or less is completely incomprehensible. It says all kinds of potential things. Of course, everyone's trying to figure out if, is, he, is he a right winger or a left winger? Is he sort of mentally unstable? It seems like that's the consensus, that he's at least mentally unstable. But is he a mentally unstable right winger? I mean, can we blame, are we supposed to blame Sarah Palin? Are we supposed to blame Glenn Beck? Or are we supposed to blame someone else, right? Whatever the left wing equivalent of those people are. Noam Chomsky, I suppose. Um, but, uh, but everyone's trying to, and so did you see what his favorite books were? Of course you didn't see. What do you think his favorite books were? Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand was one of them. Um, which one? Not, a, not even one of the big ones. Slightly obscure one, Ayn Rand. It may have been her biography, I think. Um, the Communist Manifesto. Clockwork Mein Kampf. Orange. What? Clockwork Orange. Clockwork Orange. And, uh, and then um, Alice in Wonderland. So he had all this, and then um, something else, like a bunch of like those fantasy sort of things, and then, you know, I don't know, Communist Manifesto, and then Mein Kampf, and of course they were the National Socialists. So, um, so everyone's saying, well, he's reading Marx, but that's the thing, you know, so he's a left winger, he's reading uh, Hitler, so he's a right winger. He's doing all this kind of stuff, but the, but the 